Cat. It's Maximus here, this time with a review of the Harbor Freight Chief High Power Air Hammer. I've been sitting on this for a uh, long time. Been kind of boycotting, har boycotting Harbor Freight. I got this on one of their sidewalk sales, excuse me. So, I don't know, or excuse me, not one of their sidewalk sales, but they have uh, what they call a ref refurb item table, and so I had no idea what was wrong with this one. It was probably some, one that somebody uh, had returned and said didn't work, and they just sent it off, and so I got it for a bit on sale. It wasn't that much, maybe 20% off, so that's the whole reason I even uh, decided to get it. <laughs> one of the last Harbor Freight reviews I'm going to end up doing. That's, I think I, uh, I on the same sale, I also bought one of their uh, larger rotary hammers, so there'll be a video about that coming up. But besides that, uh, okay packaging. It does come with a quick release chuck, as we saw. Get some of the other stuff out of here. Get this little cap out of here. Actually, it's kind of handy to save these for air tools that may not have fittings. Still, this thing was like uh, 80 bucks. So we have the manual. Do these, you know, and this is, I'll tell people because I get comments like this Harbor Freight manuals have always come with parts, breaks down, and part lists. And it's always been kind of a nice thing about them. When you take them apart, you can see the assembly order. I've never heard of anybody. Uh, successfully anytime I've ever asked at a variety of stores you know they can't order any type of real individual parts and so it's always been puzzling that they kind of include part lists when you can't order any of these but at least a parts explosion is better than nothing it does come with the quick release chuck it is a four ball seems to be okay regular quality these all have plastic inserts to prevent them from rattling loose no lock pins I have this Markor or this Marflow. Uh, I think this is actually known as a rivet buster. Uh, but air hammers and rivet busters. Air hammers just tend to be smaller, lighter weight, shorter stroke, and faster operating. Rivet busters tend to be slower, hard hitting. And that's what I call this thing. I mean, this is a, they call it an air hammer, but this is a rivet buster. As far as this collar, here's the Napa one. Here's the one that came with this. Napa one's a lot better. I really like the locking uh, set screws. But at least it did come with a quick release chuck. It just may come loose periodically, and so you'll be battling with trying to keep it tight. That's why the Napa has set screws, because they found overuse, these things do get loose. So make sure you get this thing nice and tight there. This thing is a beast, probably weighs about three pounds. You can really feel that, all the steel up in the actual uh, piston mechanism, and then this composite body, so the balance point Actually, it's not too bad. I guess it's about in the middle of the tool. It's a semi-mid grip. It does have a spring-loaded uh, throttle on it versus, say, on this Marquardt, which is actually air-loaded trigger there. But to tell you the truth, I'd say about both Both of these are probably about the same weight. It is a really wide uh, ergonomic trigger, so this is pretty comfortable. That is some type of rubberized or vinyl TPU overmold there. And yes, this thing is made in Taiwan. Always make sure to wear safety glasses and hearing protection when operating with air hammers. It does have a little screen filter on the input. It has this additional fitting. Although you may be able to pull out this fitting and actually stick in a uh, half inch MPT. So let me get a fitting on there. Give it a quick run. Fortunately, you don't need that big an air compressor with air hammers unless you're using them con uh, continuously. By the way, this is not a composite body. This is interesting. This is like a cast magnesium here. This is not plastic. I was like feeling it and it's just a bit too cold, but it's really distinctive around here. You can really see where that's actually cast metal rather than plastic. Interesting. Let's see how it sounds. Come on now. Probably need, it may need a bit in there. Let me get a bit in there. It's also brand new. I did put some lube in here. That's not too bad, actually. I like the mid grip because it doesn't want to kick up quite as much. And it's actually reasonably quiet. You can really tell if we go to this old school front exhaust. A Marflow, this thing is loud. It's also, I can tell, isn't 
doesn't have quite as large a piston as this Chief does. I'm actually surprised. Let's go do a couple little empirical tests here. I got a little piece of, what is this, 3 quarter inch by 5 sixteenths. Actually, that may be 3 eighths. 6061 aluminum. I'm just going to do some imperial tests, empirical tests between these two just to see the power. I don't have any bushings to bust out or bearings to uh, knock out. So we're just going to see what it does with some various tooling here. See what kind of uh, damage. Jeez. Don't want to put your... That's not a very good tool to use. Let's try this. We'll try the spike here. Shouldn't have driven that in. Oh, I gotta go pry this out now. Well, those little demonstrations sucked. It all drove that spike into the wood pretty good. I guess it's a pretty good hammer. Maybe that's what it's intended for. I got the chisel here. Let's see if we can't maybe cut this. Man, it does bounce around a lot. Well, I was stood on that for a fair amount of time. It's doing okay. The wood is absorbing some of the energy, so if you were trying to knock a bushing out with the steel collar, trying to split a nut, trying to remove a bearing race from the inside of a hub, since that's hard steel inside another hard steel object, you'll actually be delivering more force than I am. A uh, piece of aluminum on top of a piece of wood there. I'm going to try one more time with this little spike tool but standing on that piece of aluminum smartly instead of holding it with my hand just to see how much I can drive this. All right, let's see what the Marcor or the Marflow does. At least that uh, Chief is pretty smooth. I'll definitely give him that. It seems to be that is true, it is pretty well balanced. That collar is actually easier to use, but it's not as heavy duty as this Napa one. Whoop. Let's see what the Marflow does. Doesn't feel like it has as heavy a hammer in it, that's for sure. Although you get a lot more uh, speed out of the Marflow. And to tell you the truth, energy is velocity times mass. And I had that on there maybe the same amount of time or maybe a little less than the uh, Chief and it made it almost as deep. And this thing's a lot smaller and a lot older. Whoop, what am I doing? Let's see what it does with the chisel. Ah. Oh, come on. Here we go. We'll do that chisel. Once again here. Yeah, this is where you see it. That mark is just not as deep as on the Chief. So that really shows where it has uh, quite a bit more energy for the Chief does versus this one. Let me swap again. I'm going to try this one more time with the Chief here. Right next to what I just did with that Marflow. Whoop. It definitely is smoother. I do have to give him that. There's the first couple of shots and there it is again. That's kind of hard to say, because that's the Chief I just did, that's the Marflow. I didn't spend quite as long with the Chief, I don't think. It's pretty close. So there you have it. I didn't have, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry for yelling if I was. I had earplugs in, so I couldn't quite hear myself. It's hard to judge something like this, because the effectiveness of one of these tools isn't just about how heavy the piston is. 
It's about how fast it's actually moving and traveling and how many times it goes back and forth reciprocates per minute. That's the work done. Then that's how you get a calculation of total energy delivered over a given period of time will determine the amount of work that an air hammer can do. To tell you the truth, I was actually kind of hoping that this would have just cleanly beat this, where I would have done these little tests here and where one of the cuts was just been way deeper, you know, would have been 50% deeper. I was actually kind of hoping this thing would just cut right through this piece of aluminum, even on a block of wood like that. That wasn't the case. And even though the Marflow, I can feel it, it doesn't quite have a heavy a hammer. It just, it swings it at a much higher rate. So it's ended up hitting, even though there's smaller hits, it's getting more hits in in the same amount of time as the Chief. So the Chief may be better on really stubborn bronze bushings, maybe on heavy equipment where really those are the situations where you just need the most mass, even if it's just swinging real slow. And I think a lot of people will be okay with it. I just wish for how much bulk this thing has, and that's probably the biggest deal is this, just an absolute huge amount of bulk. I mean, this thing is probably 30% more volume than this Marflow, and it's not delivering 30% more energy, and I really kind of wish it was. Otherwise, it's a nice looking tool. It does have decent ergonomics, but it has like all this extra stuff on the back, and I'm not really sure what for. Although maybe there's a big spring back there or something, and that's what's helping reduce vibration. This does have less vibration, and it is quieter. But once again, not by a huge margin. But it does have nice ergonomics. So that's my uh, funky little review of the Harbor, the best air hammer Harbor Freight's ever had, the uh, Chief Professional Long Barrel Air Hammer. I don't know if it's really worth the money. It's more you kind of have to decide. Really, if you can get a decent coupon, then it's probably worth it. Otherwise, uh, for whatever the, the retail price is, around 100 bucks for this, I would probably look at a, you know more of an established commercial brand. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.